Hey friends, welcome back to BIM Voice. Today I have the pleasure to talk to Alexander Kesonia, who is a BIM coordinator at Baninur in Norway. Baninur is the railroad administration of Norway. So he has a pretty interesting role. And today we want to touch upon how is the usual day in the life of a BIM coordinator. Hi Alexander, how are you doing? Hi, it's good, thanks. What about you? I'm perfect. I'm really happy to have you here and I'm really curious and uh, interested to learn more about how is uh, one of your days at work. But before you show me that, please tell me a bit about yourself. Yeah, my name is Alexander Sonias. I am a surveyor, but uh, I started with uh, BIM in uh, 2020. In this time, I was working uh, with one uh, construction company, and then it was a BIM project where it was too much models, and it was good for me, so I just uh, started with that. So now I work in uh, Barn and Noor in one year and uh, it's one uh, good and uh, big project here that sounds very good show us a bit about how is your uh, daily uh, job what tools are you using how you are using them and so on yes actually we have a uh, navis works in uh, navis works we have uh, all of uh, our uh, models and everything which we're gonna big and which we're gonna destroy so here is traffic today but uh, we must stop traffic in uh, some uh, periods where we gonna big uh, railway and everything before you go further which project is this one because we did not talk about that it's a uh, drumming station so uh, we want a big uh, new station in uh, drumming so we're gonna big uh, new bridge car and uh, we're gonna be a tunnel here so it's gonna be a new railway in drumming that's very interesting yeah i think this is the same project yeah i remember i had thomas os here and it's the same project so yeah i'm really curious to see where did you get today yeah here we have more models and uh, we don't have too much drawings we have just a little bit drawings which are necessary to build something with uh, small uh, details i understand so the building is happening using the model right so yeah. how do you feel that goes is that challenge free or what kind of challenges did you get first time i uh, used uh, models in uh, building uh, because of uh, i was working on this project but like uh, construction so it wasn't so easy on start but now when you just think that you don't have papers and uh, everything that you have just mobile phone or uh, ipad or uh, something like that and if you're thinking that you have much more details and much more information on your uh, telephone or uh, on your uh, iPad, so it's better. It's almost all guys which are going out for a check, they have an iPad with model. So uh, they are from uh, 20 to 65 years old, but it's not a problem. Yeah, when you look back, when you started this, did you think it's going to be more difficult to do it? Or you look back and say, oh, well, this happened easier than I thought it's going to be. It was easier, but uh, you must just think what you need when uh, you are uh, outside. If you're going to check some uh, construction, so you need this model and you must uh, know what you need to check. And then you can just choose those details which you need. You don't need all of models for a project, but also it's uh, good that you have somewhere in cloud all uh, models. Then if you are outside or you're going to check, I don't know, a road, something about road and uh, you are there and you see that uh, there is something with uh, cables or uh, drainage or something like that oh well, yeah maybe i need to check this also but then you have a model for uh, drainage and model for uh, road so you have everything if you are on a uh, paper and uh, today and uh, just one uh, drawing so you can check just that which uh, drawing you have so it's much better with uh, models and beam. as you said that's just one of the advantages of using and employing beam on your projects yeah but uh, it's mm. a very important one yeah you are not limited mm. by the place or by the drawings you have with you to check something so yeah that's very handy something about the project it's big project so we have a tunnel we have a railway we have a bridge some constructions road everything so actually here is all those model and all is uh, designed in phase so here we have viewpoints and if i uh, want to choose this facility so it is just this what we're gonna big in this phase 
that's interesting. This is like you have a universal model and you just save these views where you have all these elements in every different phase, right? Yes. It is you who is doing that? No, it's a designer. Okay. It's a null consult here and they do it, but we must use it for check about how they build those objects and is everything okay. And also we have all information about objects in our model. So if I go here, so if I want to to take, uh, for example, uh, this one here. So we have a PSX here and we have information about this object. Mm -hmm. So we know we're gonna pick this in this phase and it's uh, gonna be permanent. Some objects we're gonna pick in phase 10 and then we're gonna destroy them in uh, phase 15 or uh, 20 or uh, 30. So we have uh, those informations here. So we have information which part of project gonna big this i understand you said that people are using on the project tablets and the mobile phones i guess yeah. they are not using navisworks right to read this information they must use another tool what is it you use for that it's a uh, trimble connect okay is it possible to show anything about that from your desktop trimble connect you can use uh, in a browser or uh, you have application which you can use. So it's just a question what you're going to do or uh, if you need more information. So it's better to use than a browser. But mm -hmm. uh, if you need just to show models and uh, projects, so it's better in uh, application. And also we're using Trimble uh, Site Vision. I'm going to show this uh, a little bit later. E Trimble Connect. So we have all of those models here. And then uh, if we need to check constructions here so when we building those uh, foundations so we need uh, some information about uh, steel here yeah, yeah, that looks pretty detailed reinforcement right there. Yeah, but we don't need information about when we're gonna build this because of we know we're building this now and uh, we don't need information when we are there outside the infault and we begin about uh, Bane data and those information. Then we have in table here. So we have those. So all the constructions or the structural elements, the reinforcement for them, it's laid in after consulting this model, right? There are no yep. drawings or drawing generated from or views for this, right? You just click on the reinforcement and you get the information you need to place the reinforcement, right? Yes. And it's uh, those properties which we need. So it's position. Position number, yes. Hmm. And then if we want to find this here position, it's those there. And we can see here is 24. Yeah. And the center distance is 150 hours, 15 centimeters. So we can uh, use another colors. And also if we are uh, outside and uh, we're going to check about everything is okay. So we just take this one and we have those information and those options. I must talk with those guys which are going to out and uh, check it. So they must tell me which properties they need. And uh, when we have this, so we can just put it here. And when you are uh, outside and uh, going to check, so you can just choose this one which you want. And also we using Trimble Connect the desktop. What do you do with that? Here we can use point clouds. So we're using here a drone, we're using uh, scanners. We have uh, point clouds, we have uh, autophoto, we have uh, much data. So it's... Uh... So you can overlay this and uh, check if everything is placed accordingly, right? Yes. Also we're using Gemini. It's software for surveyors in Norway. And then when everything is built, they must measure everything and send where is pipe, where is what. And then we was uh, thinking which attributes we need here, which properties we need for find those objects here, which uh, measure this, just put in properties like a uh, pipe 200. So I don't know where is which kind of pipe. And then we have an Dumi number or we have Bane data ID. Which is an ID for internal database where Banenur has uh, information about all the objects on a project, right? Mm. And the uh, checklists and uh, everything. So when I have this here, so I can find this in Navis or Trimble Connect. And then I can check, yeah, okay this object here, it's built, it's measured, and it's correct. So yes, okay, everything is good here. And then we coming here, for example, uh, I don't know, there. Okay, this one object have one data idea here, and we don't have measuring. Is it built? Yeah, it's built. Okay, can you just uh, measure this? Yeah, so they uh, measure and uh, send us. 
and then we will yeah okay that's correctly or it's something is uh, not 100 percent but it's uh, a little bit outside the uh, tolerance so and then we can uh, show what we do it's a little bit outside tolerance yes but it's good enough i see you are using these tools you showed us how do you yeah. communicate on your project how is the communication handled communication with all the parts with the designers for example like if you find something you just write an email or do you have any other tool that uh, you use for this it's beam collab okay can you very briefly show me how you use it i can uh, here here was uh, some problem with uh road so okay so you just double click on it and you get directed in the model yeah. on the right hand side i see i construct what do you use i construct for i use it mostly for export those spanner data id and those properties which i need to check measurings and everything what we have from constructors but also i using this for viewpoints for selection sets for take more information in model and also if i need to build new groups of objects and i use this for a beam 360 glue just for export one model which is a good in BIM 360 glue. I have some plans for use this much more for a link between model and database with those Spana data ID. And now we can uh, see here. Yeah. It looks correctly now. Okay, so it was fixed. It was. Okay, but then the status of that error was not adjusted to fixed or was it checked as resolved and you showed me? It's a result. Okay, I understand. Before it was a collision there, yeah. This plate here was here, so now it's correctly. I understand. We saw some site vision files in there or names earlier. What can you tell us about site vision then? It's here to do elements. Here was uh, some collision. So I was outside, used just a uh, triple site vision, and then I look, it's gonna be here, but here is not good, so we must uh, move this barrier here. That fence. Yes, and also I have some pictures here. How useful is this? Is this really useful or is it just a complement to anything else? It's uh, very useful, but here is not uh, one millimeter. Here is uh, more like two, three, four centimeter. The precision. Yeah, five. Because of you have a GPS here and you have compass. So mm -hmm. if you going too fast, so you have problem with satellites and the GPS. But if you just stay one place, then you have problem with compass. So you must move not much not very quickly but not stay either i understand yeah and then you can show what you're gonna build here but you can't build you can't just come somewhere and say yeah here you need surveyor it's a good tool and i guess it's getting better and better because this is still the early days of ar in our industry right but i guess they are making progress with this every day right yeah and also we use some drones it's just maybe mini because of here is too much buildings and too much people so we don't use those big drones but ncc they have a phantom 4 pro which uh, what is doing because i don't know what i'm doing this here it takes more detailed videos and pictures yeah have a better camera okay i understand yeah and we have auto photo point cloud and model which coming each second week here on this project and here we can import some data if we want to see where we're gonna big something and also we can use those point clouds in another softwares so if i need to take this point cloud in navesworks so i just download point cloud and take point cloud in a recap and then export like a rcp and use this in Navesworks. so actually we don't have one software which can do everything no it's too complex the process and everything it's not possible yes and we have too much objects which we can't use just one so we must have more softwares and we must use this software which is correctly for those objects we had a look at the tools you are using but how are you actually using them during the day i'm a surveyor so i have uh, sometimes also some questions for survey so it depends which questions i have from guys here actually i'm starting with open navis and gemini and Trimble Connect. And then I'm gonna check mail and I go in Beam Collab for a show about all those. See if there are any issues, right? Yeah. 
issues. And if we don't have those, then I speak with another people here and they told me about what they need. Is it just checking of measuring or if it's checking of objects which are built or they need to go outside and they need some new options in or some new properties. Properties for the objects. Yes. Yeah. I understand. In uh, Connect. Yeah. Are you using BIM Collab also to generate reports? Do you use reports for anything? No, not yet. And also here is as built from from project and then i'm checking is it good is everything mm -hmm. built is everything in those difference and also those molebre it's documentation for uh, measuring yeah. some stuff yeah and then uh, we use ifc for those documentation and we have information here about which contract processes that and then we have it on all objects and then we can check that it's easier when all of another guys use Trimble Connect or uh, another IFC reader for a check. I understand. What are you using to store everything? So do you have a common data environment here? Where are all these files? Does anyone involved in the process have access to that place or? We using eRoom for a database and there is all models and when a designer is ready with one model, so he sending this to model server there. And then we take this model, check, everything is good. Everything looks good. Yeah, okay. Then we can send this to construct. Yeah, so you approve it and send it further. Because of we have a documentation control and uh, all of those projects is height level here. So we must have our key. This looks very nice. I envy you, at least for now, because it looks like you have a very exciting and fun at work, actually. Mm. So I guess every day is different for you because you have so many different tasks and so many different uh, yeah people you are interacting with, right, during the day. Yeah, and it's my job and my hobby. So that's very nice to hear because mm. find something you like to do and you will never work a day in your life anymore, you know. That's what Confucius, I think, said. I'm really happy to hear that. And uh, I hope I will be able to say the same soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. If somebody wants to ask you anything, how can somebody reach out to you? LinkedIn? It's all right if yeah. people contact you on LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay. It's good. Awesome. Well, Alexander, thank you very much for everything you showed me. I really learned a lot about this and I can't wait to do it myself. Thank you for your invitations. I hope we speak again. Yeah, of course. Definitely.